something had gone wrong. And then suppose you were sitting beside a man who wanted to die, who really wanted to die. That's my situation in a story called An Honorable Way to Die. A story you're going to hear on Theater 5. You came aboard in the nick of time, miss. We're just about to take off. I know. My cab got caught in a simply fabulous traffic jam just outside the airport. Oh. Anyway, I'm here. I, I, I'm i supposed to have seat uh, oh, 4B. Yes, I have it here on my chart. You're Miss Turner? That's right. Your seat is right there on your left. The one on the aisle next to the gentleman wearing sunglasses. Thanks, I see it. I'll take your coat just as soon as we're airborne. Okay, thanks a lot. Hi. I'm your seatmate. Oh, I was wondering if I was going to have one. Uh, before you settle down, wouldn't hmm? you rather have this seat by the window? Oh, no, thank you. Well, there isn't much to see from a jet in flight, but I'll gladly exchange with you if you like. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Mr... Block, Howard Block. Oh, hi, I'm Betty Turner. Well, it's nice of you, but I wouldn't look out that little window for a million dollars. You're timid about flying? Timid? I'm petrified. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, here comes the bad news. We're going to leave. Welcome aboard Flight 419 to Los Angeles. I am Miss Harper, your stewardess, and your pilot and co-pilot are Captain Ellis and Lieutenant Gannon. The weather across the continent is excellent, and we should arrive in L.A. on schedule. In accord with regulations, please see that your seat belts are properly fastened and observe the no smoking sign. Thank you. Oh, gosh, Mr. Block. That bit about fasten your seatbelt always knocks me out. It's it's like they're in, inviting something to happen, don't you think? No, Miss Turner. I find all superstitions rather primitive. And oh, say! Do you know who's on this plane? Uh, up there across the aisle. Oh, looks vaguely familiar. That is Dwight Manning. You know. Oh, yes. Wall Street, real estate, international oil. Well, you certainly should feel better with him on board. In a funny way, I do. I mean, he wouldn't be on the plane if it weren't safe, would he? At least Dwight Manning's name would add class to the obituaries. You're honestly not scared of flying? Not even a little? Not in the least. Well, I certainly envy you. I always think it's the end. Well, why are you so frightened of dying? Because I like living. Don't you? No. I don't care when or how I go, as long as it's sudden and painless. Mr. Block, that's a terrible thing to say. Listen, talking like that might bring us bad luck. <laughs> In that case, Miss Turner, you should have thought to bring a rabbit's foot. Please, please, let us just get up off the ground. <laughs> you may open your eyes now, Miss Turner. We survived the takeoff. <sighs> And I am a quivering wreck. Well, anyway, we we made it, right? I'm afraid so. You're afraid so? Look, Mr. Block, I, I wish you wouldn't kid that way. It really isn't very funny. Oh, I wasn't trying to be funny. I'm not a comedian. Boy, you can say that again. If this was What's My Line, I guess you were an undertaker, right? No, I'm a writer. Really? I'm an actress. That's why I'm going to Hollywood. I'm getting a screen test. And I'm so excited I can hardly breathe. Oh, uh... Why are you going, if you don't mind my asking? No, I'm going to the coast to try for a certain screenwriting assignment. But uh, I'm only going to humor my wife. I know very well I won't get the job. Why do you say that, for heaven's sake? Because in my case, that's the usual pattern. Either the picture will already have been canceled, or the producer will have hired his son-in-law. I don't understand you. I really don't. Honestly, Mr. Block, you are the most pessimistic person I've ever met. I don't doubt it. But now, if you'll excuse me, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to get a little sleep. Well, pleasant dreams. Mr. Block. Listen, Mr. Block, are you asleep? Huh? Well, not really, not quite. Uh, are we coming into Los Angeles? No, no. The stewardess just said we'll be there in about, about 40 minutes. Oh. Look, please don't go back to sleep. I have to talk to you. I'm worried. What about? Well, the funniest things have been happening. First, 
The pilot came out and hurried down the aisle. After that, the co-pilot did the same thing. Both of them looked kind of grim, and oh, I'm just sure something's gone wrong. I don't mind telling you I am scared. Oh, look, Miss Turner, please. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Listen. this is your pilot speaking. There's no need to be alarmed, but to avoid confusion, I want to advise you that we have a little mechanical trouble. Oh, no. I knew it. Fact is, our landing gear seems to be jammed. No. Everything possible has been done to uh, shake it loose, so to speak, but no can do. So, it looks like we'll have to come down without wheels, what we call a belly landing. A belly landing? Oh. Now, this has been done before in cases like this, and it can be done again. The airport's been alerted, and every precaution will be taken on the ground. Please be calm and follow any instructions we give you. <laughs> We're all going to be killed. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Miss I can't Turner, stop please. it. Be quiet. Oh, why did I ever take this? still be quiet. Thanks, Mr. Block. I'll bring your sedative. Please do. And after that, you'd better go and baby those other silly fools. Mr. Block, I don't think you should talk like... Never mind. Well, Miss Turner, how are you feeling now? Oh, I guess... kind of dazed. What did you give me, anyway? Oh, just a small, harmless pill. Uh, Miss Harper, how soon do we arrive at the uh, moment of truth? We land in 20 minutes, Mr. Block. Miss Turner, if you need me, just ring the bell. Okay. Mr. Block, I'm sorry about the way I, I fell apart. Do you, do you really think we're going to crash? That's a fascinating question that won't be answered for 20 minutes. But if we do crash, we'll never know the answer. A typical irony, isn't it, to be cheated out of the denouement? I don't like the way you talk, Mr. Block. Or the way you look, either. Why are you smiling? I'm musing on the impending prospect of eternity. Oof. The awful things you say give me the creeps. You know, I really think you want to die. Am I right, Mr. Block? Do you? Mr. Block! Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I was musing again. What did you I ask? I asked you if you... Oh, yes. Your query concerned a possible death wish. Am I that transparent, or are you acutely perceptive? I don't know what you mean. I... Strange. No one has ever seen behind my mask before. Not even poor Jenny. Jenny? Uh, my wife, of course. Oh. There's no other Jenny. On the other hand, she may have sensed my despair long ago and kept silent to save me the pain of making an admission of defeat. Did you sense it, Jenny? Tell me truly. How long have you been aware of the fact that I've been searching for an honorable way to die? Mr. Block, I've often I... thought of destroying myself, my poor darling. Knowing that you'd be better rid of me. That would have been the ultimate indignity to thrust upon you. No, I must set you free in a less painful way. At this moment, I find myself on the threshold of the honorable death I've been seeking... This at last might be your day of freedom. Mr. Black, what are you talking about? Hmm? You were kind of far away. You said something about destroying yourself. Did you mean suicide? No. Well, that would be impossible. I could never do that to Jenny. I love her too well to bring disgrace upon her. But why do you want to die? Because I'm a complete and absolute failure. She'd be better off rid of me. I told you I was a writer. Yes? Bitter joke. During the past two years, I haven't earned a dollar at the typewriter. Every manuscript shows promise for a short time, then withers and dies. Editors who like my work one day change their minds and reject it the next. It's as if I were a Jonah. Jenny has stood by me faithfully. But with each of my failures, she is manifestly more heartsick. More weary and forlorn. Oh, Jenny. I keep promising you that tomorrow will bring a change in our fortunes. But you know I'm only lying to you. And to myself as well. Aware of my hopelessness and frustration, you bet. 
Stoic silence. Mr. Buck, please. My feeling of guilt at having failed you, darling. It's almost more than I could bear. And the fact that you stand at my side without voicing a complaint only increases my terrible burden of guilt. Mr. Block, please stop it, please. Hmm? Oh, uh, well, my wife is still an attractive woman, Miss Turner. Uh, quite beautiful, in fact. But she should have washed her hands of me long ago. Would you like to hear a strange confession? I, I don't know. I... I spent our last dollar for this useless flight to Hollywood. And now I'll tell you why I'm not upset about our present danger. Before I boarded this plane, I bought the limit in flight insurance, naming Jenny as my beneficiary. And so if I were to die, I would at last have done something worthwhile for my beloved wife. Can you appreciate the simple beauty of that solution? No. No, I can't. Like you said, you are a Jonah. This trouble with the airplane is all your fault. Mr. Black, you really want this plane to crash? He wants the plane to crash, everybody! Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it Girl of the ladies' room and quiet her down. I'll try it, Miss Come on, Miss Turner. Quickly. It's a please. Jonah. Do you hear everybody? A Jonah. It's all his fault. He's out of his mind. He wants to. All right, it. everybody. Let's quiet down. Now, be quiet, I said. Knock it off. Well, now, that's better. Our situation's fairly serious, but childish panic isn't going to help. Well, what about that man, that Jonah? That's nonsense. The girl was hysterical, that's all. But she said he wants us to crash. Well, I can't believe that, but I'll sit down here and have a talk with him. Then you better tell him to pray like the rest of us. I'll do that. You, Mr. Block? That's right, Captain. All right, let's make it brief. What have you been telling that girl? That I'm prepared to die, willing, in fact. Don't you care about the others aboard this airplane? Not particularly. I doubt that they care about me. Mr. Block, you better change your thinking. Everyone else is hoping, praying that we'll pull through. That's their privilege. But surely you can't believe that a change in my thinking can influence the outcome of this mechanical emergency. Either we'll land safely or we won't. And no amount of mental gymnastics can alter the result. As a practical man, Captain, you must know that I'm right. Well, I haven't got time to argue that point. You're a callous man, Mr. Block. I hope you live to regret your irresponsible statements. You already know what I hope. Goodbye, Captain. Uh, sorry, I can't say good luck. Mr. Block, that is your name, I believe, Howard Block? Yes. I'm your new seatmate. Oh, what happened to that emotional young lady? Uh, she refused to sit next to you again, so I changed places with her. I want to talk to you. There isn't much time, is there? Ten or fifteen minutes. Uh, my name is Dwight Manning. Yes, I know. I assume you've heard of me. Finance, yachtsman, art collector. You are that one, aren't you? Correct. Now, let's get to the point. That girl was babbling about your wanting this plane to crash. Any truth in that? Yes, she was right. In the classic expression, I have nothing to live for. Ah, but I have a great deal to live for, Mr. Block. Both for myself and others. Business, wife, children. In that order, I'm sure. Are you always so insufferably rude? Your prying into the mind of a stranger isn't exactly courteous. There's little time for fencing, Block. Regardless of your own feelings, don't you care about the rest of the passengers? Captain Ellis posed that same question. My answer was, not particularly. It still stands. Well, I suggest that you alter your cynical attitude. Our present danger is real enough without your tempting fate by mocking it. Well, now, there's an interesting revelation. The practical, monolithic Dwight Manning is humanly superstitious. Mr. Block, any man who denies holding certain beliefs of that nature is a liar. I also give credence to the laws of chance and probability. During the past decade, I've survived two airplane disasters. The odds on my surviving a third are not in my favor. True. But you spoke of my altering my cynical attitude. Now, do you actually believe that if I hold the right thought, the odds on your survival will be improved? Yes, I do. My whole career, my fortune is based on such beliefs. Why do you want to die, Mr. Block? For my wife's sake. 
she'd be better off rid of me. I beg your pardon? As I told my former seatmate, I'm heavily insured for this flight. If I were to win my bet with the insurance company, my wife would gain economic security, a chance to live, which I haven't been able to give her. You're willing to die for money? Let's say I'm unwilling to live without it. Then, then it's merely a lack of money that motivates your, your ghoulish attitude at this moment. It's a powerful motivation, call it what you will. Relieved of money problems, I'd be quite willing to share your wish to live. You're a wealthy man, Mr. Manning. Would you care to underwrite a sudden change in my ghoulish attitude? Block. <laughs> How's that for an unrealistic business proposition? Well, it, it may not be as unrealistic as you think. What do you mean? That hysterical girl called you a Jonah. She may have been right. For the good of the majority, the biblical Jonah was cast into the sea. A course of action which, unfortunately, we cannot emulate. Now, Mr. Block... Exactly how much money would it take to underwrite your proposed change of attitude? Well, I'll, I'll go along with a gag, as the comedians say. What about uh, $25,000? Fair price. You've just made a deal. What? Here, what are you doing? I'm writing you a check. But are you serious? I'm a businessman, Mr. Block. To me, it's an investment. I want every chance to get out of this alive. I want everyone on this plane to hope and pray for safety. And when I want something, I buy it. Yes, but I... Here's your check. It's real. Yes, it's really real. <laughs> $25,000. Jenny. Jenny, we're free. What? Uh, nothing. Now, for your part of the bargain... In the few minutes we have left, you must truly and fervently hope and pray that we come down safely. I will. I will. You swear it on the love of my wife. I beg you to listen to your servant. Captain Ellis speaking. As you can see, we're coming in for a landing. In the cockpit, we can see that every possible safety precaution is being taken on the strip. Pray with me, Julie. Remember that I'm in this airplane. Pray with me, and I want to get safely just as much as you do. Be sure of that. We all sweated this out together, and with good luck, we'll make it. Okay, now keep your belts tight. We're coming in. Oh, Miss Turner, Miss Turner, over here in the phone booth. Oh, who is it? Oh, it's you. Well, I don't want to talk to you, Mr. Block. Well, this is no time to be sullen. We're alive and breathing. Look, I heard about that $25,000 check. We all heard about it, and we say it's blood money. If you ask me, you are the nastiest, most gruesome character I ever met. Oh, that's very funny. As the man says, I'm going to laugh all the way to the bank. Yes, and while your mouth is hanging open, I hope you choke. What are you doing in this phone booth? Canceling your funeral reservation? I'm calling my wife in New York to tell her the good news. She'll be ecstatic. Yes, especially when you tell her how you got that money. Wait, wait, I'm getting my connection. Wouldn't you like to talk to Jenny and tell her how we cheated the angel of death together? Look, the only thing I could tell your wife is that she's married to a maniac. So long, friend, and please drop dead alone. <laughs> Hello? Oh, uh, Jenny. Hi, darling. Oh, it's you. Look, I've just arrived in L.A., and I've got the most wonderful news you ever heard in your life. Howard, I... listen. Uh, Jenny, darling, we'll, we'll never have to worry again as long as we... Howard, listen to me. Don't you want to hear what happened? I've got $25,000. Yes, I'm sure you have. Listen, Howard, I'm no longer interested in your fantasies. But it isn't a fantasy. Will you please be quiet and listen? After you left this morning, I talked to a lawyer. A lawyer? Why? If he can arrange it, I never want to see you again. No. I'm divorcing you, Howard. No. I'm rid of you. Rid of you at last. Jenny, no. I'm sorry, Howard. Goodbye. Jenny! 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 <laughs> 